Welcome to worship with the First Presbyterian Church of Dallas on this sixth Sunday in Easter. I'm Amos DeSasa and today I'm leading worship with Tracy DePew, members of the Chancel Choir, the Reverend Rebecca Chancellor Six, and Cheryl Taylor Lemons. Wherever you may be, inside or outside, on a walk or running errands, sitting at your desk or beside your family on the couch, be strengthened. Be strengthened for worship by the words of the poet in Psalm 66, who says, Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will tell what God has done for me. God has listened to the words of my prayer and responded. Blessed be the Lord, because God has never failed me. Let us go now into the house of the Lord to worship God. confession grants us the opportunity to be honest with God and ourselves, to admit before God the ways we have turned away from loving God and loving our neighbors. We come before God in humility, knowing that our God is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. So let us turn to God and pray together. Everlasting God, you are never far from us, but we confess that we don't always look for you or give you our attention. We believe we can create better and do more than you. We seek personal comfort and pleasure 
over justice for all creation. In your great mercy, forgive us. Call out to us once again so we might turn to you and listen. My friends, God knows us. God gave us life and breath. God sent Jesus to show us the way. And in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven, healed, and made whole. Thanks be to God. Amen. Christ has forgiven us and extends peace to us. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Friends, I invite you now to share signs of Christ's peace and forgiveness with others. You may pass the peace by text, phone, email, or social media, or even with those in your own home. Friends, we also remember at this time that God made the world and everything in it. God does not need us to serve God, but out of our gratitude for life and breath and all things, we return to God the gifts of our lives and labors. So if you would like to make an offering today to First Presbyterian Church of Dallas to support our mission and ministry, you may do so by texting F. P C Dallas to the number 77977. You will receive a link on your phone that will direct you to a secure giving page where you can either make a one-time gift or set up a recurring gift. Again, you may text FPC Dallas to 77977. May the peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. I love you. I love you. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. Yay! May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Yay! Our scripture this morning is from Acts 17, verses 22 through 31. Listen now for God's word as it comes to you and for you. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship is unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything. Since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things, from one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God, and perhaps grope for him, and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. And since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by human hands. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
title of this sermon is Distracted by Grace. Have you ever forgotten where you were or what you were supposed to be doing? I have, most of the time. When this happens, I lose track of time in my plans because I get distracted by someone or something. You know, I'll start cutting an apple and then I'll hear a noise outside like a car that was spinning out or a or a garbage truck that's barreling down the road on its weekly run through the neighborhood. And without thinking, I'll move to a window and I'll stare, hoping to see what made the sound. Anywhere from five minutes to five hours will pass before I notice the knife patiently waiting for me to come back and join it with the apple. But every now and then, the, the distraction from life as I intend it to be comes from a place that exists beyond the boundaries of time. You're, you're moved there to the window to stare, but it's not to solve a mystery. You are moved there by a divine combination of sounds and sights and smells to witness the, the mystery of God. Time doesn't stop there. It stretches infinitely and your body, it doesn't disappear. It's more present than ever. And everything is dark and light, full and empty, perfect and still being perfected all at the same time. Let me tell you about one of those times. A few years ago, I spent a couple of days in the mountains, a few thousand feet closer to the stars than we are right now. At night, the stars, the stars are more enthusiastic in their yearning to be noticed. That night, they seem to multiply against the darker backdrop that's always been there but gets flushed out by all the artificial lights that we produce in our cities. Hundreds of puny stars at the center of distant galaxies they all strain to snatch my attention from the brighter stars that are closer, the ones that get all the glory. Well, on this one unforgettable night as I stared, stared up, straining my neck to make sense of the darkness that was peering back at me, I, I wished for a return to childhood. Right then and there in that moment, I, I wanted to go back and I wanted one more chance to go to space camp. I was transfixed. The paradox, it glowed. The cosmos was caught up in its own exuberant display of awesomeness. I watched and I noticed how near and far, proximate and distant, real and contrived, full and empty it all was. I saw the work of the Creator in setting the boundaries between space and time separating night from day, so that the great horned owl, and the barred owl, and the screech owl, so they all get a chance to hoot and be heard. I saw the work of the Creator in setting each star in a particular place and setting us to spin, spin at regular intervals around one of them. And I was distracted, I was distracted by by what has always been there. I don't know about you, but when I reach out to go and grasp for the hand of God to walk me through what seems at the time like a treacherous season in life, it, it takes a, a minute to remember that the hand has been holding me even when I'm not reaching. As the Apostle Paul said to the Athenians in our scripture, the God who made the world and everything in it doesn't live in shrines that are made by human hands. The work of the Creator couldn't be contained on that night. There was no shrine available to stick it in. There was, there was too much to hold and carry and accommodate. Now you will hear exceedingly religious people Remind you to not confuse creation with the Creator and, and begin to worship what our eyes behold. But, but that doesn't mean that we should stop staring. 
and stop pointing to falling stars and stop waiting for big full moons, solar eclipses, meteor showers. Don't stop listening if you hear the voice of the Creator between the hoots of a barn owl howling at the moon with you. Be distracted by what has always been there, but don't try to dip that moment in bronze and make a statue to the God that can sometimes be as close as when you first watched a child chase their first firefly. The God who made the world and everything in it doesn't live in shrines made by human hands and, and all the while God is not far from each of us. The Apostle Paul is passing through Athens on his way to somewhere else. He has good news to share with the world and, and in his desperation to deliver it as far and wide as possible, he has been brought to the other side of the Mediterranean, far from Jerusalem and miles from home. Paul's here. Jerusalem's here. Athens, Athens is the capital of Greek culture, and Greek culture it had this outsized influence on the world that surrounded the Mediterranean. The Athenians, they were, they were tastemakers. And their taste was exported through trading routes on roads that were built by the Romans and, and over sea swells by boat. It all went to the rest of the world. Everybody did what the Athenians do. Their, their schools of philosophy, including Epicureanism and Stoicism, they were led by, by superstar philosophers. And parents with means sent their children from distant cities to Athens to learn from them Greek, Greek architecture and drama. And their style of debating, their fascination with beauty and virtue and ethics and what constituted the good life. Everybody wanted to be Greek and everything Greek always went viral. It spread. The Greeks were also known for being exceedingly religious. The writer of Acts alludes to their reputation for lavish displays of piety when he puts their life in these words. He says that they're exceedingly religious. And he puts those words in the mouth of the Apostle Paul at the start of this short and sweet sermon that Paul delivers from the Areopagus. That translation of the word exceedingly religious is gracious because it can also be translated as superstitious. But Paul meant it as a compliment or at least a place to begin a conversation. He was looking for common ground in all the statues and the shrines that he passed on the way into town. They made it clear that the worldly, educated, consistently curious Athenians were also eager in their devotion to whatever God needed. Whatever God needed some attention. And a ride through Main Street in Athens was like a trip down the, well, it was like a trip down the line at a, at a buffet at a Golden Corral. Now, please don't hear any disrespect towards the Golden Corral and anything that I just said. We, we had a Golden Corral three miles up the street from my parents' house, and I was there on the regular, at least every other week. And only reason I stopped going to all-you-can-eat buffets is that I became aware of my own issues with portion control. I mean, how can you stop, really? when 100% of all of your favorite foods are available under a single sheet of plexiglass. You just gotta reach under and grab it. Well, by the time my mind realizes that I just shoved pizza and fried chicken wings and cheeseburgers and prime rib and a big old bowl of ranch sauce that's sprinkled with croutons and bacon, by the time my mind figures out what just happened, it would be too late. I'd, I would get to wheezing and and I'd hate myself and, and I'm sweating. I just want to go home and turn off all the lights and put on my, my big gravy pants and slowly let the shame glaze dry off of me. This is not a good place to be. I don't trust myself at the Golden Corral. I, I take the challenge of all you can eat very seriously. 
And all of you people that, that can't imagine ever eating at a Golden Corral because you think the food's inferior, all of y'all are confused. It tastes so much better than the last seaweed salad drizzled with some lemon juice and, and sprinkled with purple cabbage. The last time I ate that, I thought about Golden Corral. So, so yes, the religious devotion of the Athenians is as thorough as the buffet at Golden Corral. They got it all. No God is left out. All of them get a shrine. And just in case there is one out there that they haven't yet discovered, Athenians have that covered also with a shrine. And on the plaque below, it is written to an unknown God. And this might be where, where my Golden Corral is, as Athens metaphor ends. I, I don't think that I'd keep going on down the buffet if I, if I came up on a chicken and rice casserole that was labeled unknown. And you might say, me neither. And you may not eat at the Golden Corral, but I do think that we're more like the Athenians than we care to admit. The God who made the world and everything in it does not live in shrines made by human hands, but, but we often remain unsatisfied with the alternative. As the Apostle Paul says in verse 28, since God's not in all the shrines, God is in us and we are in God. Paul puts it this way, for in him we live and we move and we have our being. God is not consumable and God is not far from each of us. To notice is to be distracted by what has always been there. If you look around, you'll, you'll see that we don't have as many gods represented with ornate physical statues and fussed up shrines as the Athenians, but it's not because we don't worship many gods. In the world we inhabit, the multitude of gods that we worship are usually memorialized in our cultural mythology. The gods are in the stories that we tell, that point to something we imagine to be ideal. The gods are in shrines, dedicated to, wait, there, there's a shrine that's been erected, you know, in honor of a normal family. And there's the shrine that was erected to the story that we told that with enough streaming options and delivery services instantly available in the home that we wouldn't need each other, COVID-19 tore that shrine down. And there's the shrine to the beautiful body, which is usually thin and has a certain balance to the skin tone. And together they represent health and, and the promise of a, of a long life. COVID-19 tore that shrine down. And there's the shrine to the, to the story that enough successful people gathered in the same room on Sundays guarantees a successful church. COVID-19 tore it down, and guess what? We are still doing and being the church. And there's the shrine to our own youth, which probably wasn't as good or as bad as, as you recall. And, and there's a shrine to the future of the young people that are in our care, and their future will likely be better and worse in ways that we can't control right now. And there's the shrine that was erected to the promise that in America life is fair and that everyone, everyone is given an opportunity to live free before they die. COVID-19 tore it down. Yeah, I could go on. We, we've got a shrine for every shiny thing that looks like the glow of God is bouncing off of it. But since God is in us and we're in God, or as Paul says, for in him we live and we move and we have our being, or in the words of the poet, Miss Lauren Hill, everything is everything. God who is Lord of heaven and earth is not far from each of us. So, so take your hand and if you're comfortable, grab the hand of somebody close by. 
And if there's not someone close by, pick up the phone and, and call someone that won't think you're crazy for, for asking to hold their hand over the phone. Or, or you can just close your eyes and imagine someone you'd like to stare at the stars with. Now as you draw near to the life and the breath of another, try to hold that hand as if you were holding the hand of God. As if God was not far from each of us. And believe that the shrine is in you. In all the imperfection that you represent. In all the uncertainty that you feel. In all that you think you have left undone. In all that you redeemed with a timely embrace. An act of forgiveness. A prayer that you cobbled together and tentatively uttered. Alone, with our hands, we see the only shrine that we worship is the one that we carry, the cross of Jesus Christ. We can't contain everything and, and bronze it when we notice we can't control it, but if you hold on to what God already enshrined, you know. That everything is everything. God's not going anywhere and God is not far from each of us. May we always be distracted by what has always been there. In the name of God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us turn to God in prayer. Loving God, we give you our thanks and praise for listening to our prayers and showing us signs of your presence among us. We pray today for all who search for you, for those who look back, trying to find you in days gone by, for those who yearn for the certainty and knowledge and comfort of what has been. We pray for those who walk in the darkness with the smallest of lights, waiting to see your face revealed for those who wait with hope for what is to come. We pray for those who seek to live in this present moment, wanting more, holding the known and the unknown together, and working to accept what is here and now, and finding gratitude for what is. As we search for you, living God, in our memories, thoughts, reflections, and dreams. Open our eyes to find you among us as we share your love with others. We pray for all who are oppressed by governments or institutions, for those voices not heard or believed, for those who have to work harder and longer in the search for justice, for those with no one on their side. As we work toward your coming realm, grant us strength to persevere, O God, and give us the hearts, hands, and voices that will make justice flow like a waterfall. We pray for all who hunger, for those who hunger for daily bread, for those who hunger for righteousness, for those who hunger for human connection, community, and a deeper relationship with you. We pray for those who worry each day how they will care for their families. As we share from our abundance and give our lives to your service, O God, grant us compassion, care, and kindness for all of your people. We pray for all who suffer violence and destruction, for all who live in homes where there is no peace. We pray for all active military personnel and their families, for the people who build up from the ruins, for people who, even in these days, provide a safe haven for others and work for healing and wholeness. As we honor each one in the human family, O oh God, grant us your vision for peace. We pray this day for all who grieve, 
for all who bear the burden of sorrow and sadness, for all who live day in and day out with those whose lives hang gently in balance. We pray for your servants who get up early and stay up late in an effort to save lives, find a vaccine, and care for others. We remember today before you, O God, all who have died, and pray for all who will die today, that they may know your peace. Bless us with the gift of faith, that we may know you and love you in this life and in the eternal life to come. We pray all these things and more within the depths of our hearts and souls in the name of Jesus, who calls us to follow him and who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Join me now as we affirm our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Now, friends, go in peace. You have been set free to love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And as you go, may the road rise to meet you, and the wind be always at your back, the sun shine warm upon your face, and the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hands. Amen and amen.